Good morning, Mount Zion. How are you this morning? God been good to us. Let's give him some praise this morning. Give him the highest praise. He's worthy this morning. He's worthy to be praised this morning. He brought us from our early youth up until now, and we're still here thanking and praising him. God has been good to us. He has been good to us. We're here. We thank you, and we praise you this morning. Okay. We're going to sing him 340 this morning. We invite everyone to participate with us. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. On the everlasting arms What a blessed is What a peace is mine On the everlasting arms Our scripture this morning will be coming from the book of Romans, starting with chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that ye, ye may be good and acceptable will of God. God's word to the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come this morning in thy divine presence. For in the precious name of Jesus, 
thanking thee for thy blessings that will be stored upon us. Oh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for watching over us as we come out to the house of prayer one more time, Heavenly Father. You have been good to us, mighty, mighty good, and we just want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Continue to bless each and every one of us with the blessing. You see, we stand in need of it today, Heavenly Father. Bless our pastor today, Heavenly Father. Bless him, you know, especially and his family, Lord Jesus. Bless the speaker of the day, Heavenly Father, in thy way, Heavenly Father. Just go with him and stand by him in thy way, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless all of my Zion members, Lord Jesus, the ones that are here, the ones that are on their way, and the ones that just can't make it today, Lord Jesus. Touch them, Lord Jesus, in a mighty way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless all the auxiliaries here at Mount Zion, Lord Jesus. Oh, just keep us together in your name, Heavenly Father. Together we stand, but divided we fall, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have brought us a long way here at Mount Zion. Still here, going, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless our children today, Lord Jesus, in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for them this morning, Heavenly Father. In that care, Lord Jesus. You've been mighty good to us. Bless all over the world, everywhere, Heavenly Father. Just let your presence be known, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be a lamp unto our feet here at Mount Zion and light unto our pathway. Not only at Mount Zion, but everywhere, Lord Jesus. All the churches, Lord Jesus, the pastors, the preachers, Heavenly Father. Just bless them, Lord Jesus, that they can go on, Lord Jesus, because you're coming back one day, Heavenly Father. And you're coming back for our church, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, and we praise you, Lord Jesus. These blessings we ask in thy precious name. Amen, and thank God. Sickness and sorrow. 
as the choir pre uh, prepares to, to give us another selection, nobody's in the pulpit yet. So we're going to continue with songs. Anybody want to say anything? Or anybody in the audience want to sing a song? And I woke up this morning with my mind. Yes. You know my mind.
I need thee. Oh, I need thee. some praise this morning here because I need him this morning here. give him some praise this morning hallelujah hallelujah God has been good to us there God's been good, good. thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Scripture says, For I lift up my eyes unto the hills, whence cometh mine health, and mine health cometh from the Lord. Let us continue to pray, lifting up the name of Jesus, with our minds, concerns, and hearts on the sick and the afflicted this morning. Thank you. We'll turn these services over into the hands of Reverend Robinson. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah, and I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. I was glad. Yay. He's worthy. I was glad when they said unto me, come into the house of the Lord. We're going to go ahead with our service today. Amen. Pastor and Sister Bolton are on the way. <laughs> on the way. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at God. Glory to God. So we're going to go ahead with the service. We'll have a song coming from the choir afterwards. I'll be back with your um, prayer, followed by the scripture. Amen. 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 Lord, 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 I want you to help, help me. me.
precious name of Jesus the Christ. Father, we come humbly, Lord, before the throne of grace. Father, we love you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord God. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, Lord God and sparing our lives to see it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Most of all for your son Jesus, who hung, bled, and died for our sins, by whose stripes we were healed and whose blood we were redeemed. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies, Lord, I thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit within us, Lord. We thank you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, you forgive us, Lord, for any man of sin we've committed in word, in thought, in deed, knowingly, unknowingly, by omission, by commission, Lord, forgive me. Forgive us, Lord, and then strengthen us, Lord. Search us, Lord God. If there's anything in us, Lord, that's not like you, Lord, take it away. And Heavenly Father, strengthen us. Fill us and refill us with your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, your mind manifest the presence this day, Lord God. With these, your people, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God that you bless each and every ear that hears and every eye that sees, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for dear Pastor Bolton, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for Sister Bolton, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you've done through him and all you will do, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you just continue, Lord, to use them, Lord, to your greater glory, Lord. Speak to them, Lord, and through them, Lord God. And Heavenly Father, open up hearts, Lord God, to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church, Lord God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way. 
Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that someone is saved today, Lord. Someone is sanctified today, Lord. Someone is filled with your Holy Spirit today, Lord God. Let someone be healed, delivered, and set free, Lord God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way in the magnificent, wonderful, matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And Father God, give us all, Lord, a closer walk with thee. Draw us nearer and nearer, Lord God. Take us out of self, Lord, and use us all. Help us each to accomplish our assignments on this side. And Father God, when we can say and do no more, Lord God, we're asking you for a home where we can praise your name forever. World without end, without the loss of one is our prayer, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. scripture the scripture for today is coming from Ezekiel chapter 37 and I'm going to read to you hearing verses 1 through 10 and we ask if you're able please stand in reverence to the word of God Are we there? All right. And it reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered O oh lord god thou knowest again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O oh, ye dry bones hear the word of the lord Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then saith he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man. And say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded to me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet in exceeding great army. An exceeding great army. God's word for God's people, Amen. and glory be to God. Amen. Amen. After the song, Pastor Bolton will come and continue.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is a blessed day in the life of Mount Zion. Super Senior Sunday. Y'all get the Super Seniors on. Thank God. I'm sure somebody said, I don't mind clapping for myself. <laughs> you know, the years, um, these many years that we've been doing this, um, I don't know if y'all y'all know, know how this got started, but our speaker for today, Sister Tanya, during the time when we came and we were just members, prior to my even joining the ministerial staff, we were um, sitting with uh, Pastor and Sister Belton one day, and Sister Sonia said, well, Pastor, I'd like to, she'd grown so close to you all and had such affection for you. She said, I'd like to be able to bless them with something one of the coming Sundays. And we determined what Sunday it was going to be, and, and that's what started this. And after I became pastor, we started Super Senior Sunday. And it wasn't just that she wanted to give out of her heart. That's where it all began. But this Super Senior Sunday is really an acknowledgement of God's purpose for our older saints. God design, designed older age on purpose. And he has a plan for our older people. And as the decades pass in our lives, God begins to bless us and prepare us for what's to come and what will be. See, we are not just about history, the super seniors. We are about the future. And God prepares the older folks for elderhood in the church and in society. And he spends a lifetime shaping us decade after decade and molding us to develop the character that will bless not ourselves, but will bless others. And so he grants us as we get older the ability to reflect and the ability to be thoughtful and less impulsive and to take the long view and, and be emotionally balanced and, and, and empathetic. In other words, to grow up spiritually. And he bestows upon us uh, super seniors compassion, a cooperative spirit, and a great listening skill. Super seniors uh, are to walk in that blessed position, not lording it over others, but helping, listening, mentoring, encouraging, and above all, telling of God's faithfulness. Are there any seniors in here who can tell of God's faithfulness? Are there any seniors in here who can say, I can look back over my life and see where the Lord has brought me from. I can tell of his goodness. I can tell that he will never leave you, nor forsake you. Is there any senior in here who can look back over your life and say, the Lord has been good to me? That's what Super Senior Sunday is all about. And I will speak of this morning. Tanya Bolton. I know a little bit about her. <laughs> She's wife of the pastor, mother to Alexander and Christopher. She's a, a former, um, she's a veteran of the U.S. Army of eight years. Sister Tanya has, has been a licensed professional counselor for 20 plus years and President and founder of Bolton Council Consulting, LLC, her own private firm for over for 20 years. And currently she is the uh, director of counseling at Benedict College. Amen. More than anything, she's saved, Holy Ghost filled, Amen. and guided by God. Amen. And after this upcoming song, Brother Sean, you gonna bless us this morning? Y'all might see Brother Sean normally back there with the tamarind from time to time. So he's going to move from tamarind and he's going to help lead us this morning in a song. That's like moving from fries to burgers. 
Amen. But no, Brother Sean, you come and bless us. After, after he sings, the next voice you hear is none other than Tanya Bolton. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm a little nervous, but um, I will make protocol. You know, everybody to their respective places. You know, it's a blessing to be in the house of God one more time. I'm not going to be here long. Just a little song I want to sing. Um, I choir to help out. And any mistakes, you know, take it for love. It was on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get it right. Okay, okay. Let's try it out.
y'all. Thank you, Brother Sean. I love it when um, people just want to get involved. And when, I'll just say, I've always seen Sean come in. I'm always looking back and like, hey, I didn't want to scare him. But um, finally, we got a chance to talk. And it's, it's just a blessing when people are like, I like being here and I want to be involved. And I just thank you. I thank all of you. And I thank God for the opportunity to be here today and um, to speak on one of my favorite Sundays, Super Senior Sunday. Um, although I was raised by my mom, of course, I was always a grandma and granddaddy's baby. Always, always, always. That was, you know, and I was blessed to know my great grandmom too. And I had a sincere love for my great grandfather who I never met. Um, story is he brought me home from the hospital, but I don't remember him. He passed the year that I was born. But I had much respect for him because of the stories that I heard about him and how he was such an awesome man, awesome husband, awesome father, awesome man of God. And so I said, well, at least I know I was in his arms a little bit. He brought me home, but I was blessed again to know my great grandmother, my grandmother and grandfather, and they were amazing people and their lives still influenced me today. So um, Super Senior Sunday is special to me because I love my seniors. I think y'all are amazing. And y'all still young? Y'all still got it going on? <laughs> but you're good and seasoned. And life has made you extra special. And you're still young, still young deep. <laughs> still young, but just still just as valuable. And I think in an awesome phase of life, I think that a lot of times though, uh, you know, society doesn't paint getting older as a blessing, but these days with so much happening, I think that we need to be excited about getting older because so many people aren't making it to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. Um, but I consider this to be a blessing before you, to be before you today. And, um, I'm going to tell you, I said, well, Lord, you must have something real special because it took a lot to get here this morning. It took a whole lot to get here this morning. And one thing I've learned is that any time weird stuff starts happening or it gets to be a little difficult, you know, I couldn't help. But at first, I'm not going to lie to you, at first, the human part of me was like, what in the world? Like, come on, Jesus, help me because, you know, it's all me, right? Um, and it was for real. But the other thing was... I had to calm my spirit down, and I thank God for a praying son in the background or behind me and a praying husband, and then common sense and a Holy Spirit who's saying, maybe you need to just try to figure out what's going on right now um, and tune in to what God is really trying to say and get ready for or get you ready for. Sometimes, in other words, we can, get, we can have a lot of distractions, and those distractions will keep us from focusing in and hearing from the Lord. So I had to focus in and and hear from the Lord. Um, and what's funny about that is when I did, he changed my whole message. And I'm like, for real, Lord, this is what we're doing? But I trust him. I trust him. So with that, again, good morning. I thank God for being here. And if you all will please stand, if you can. Um, we're going to read again Ezekiel 37, which Reverend Robinson has already read. And I thank you for that. Y'all see, I had to put on my other set of eyes because y'all would have had to read. <laughs> okay, Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 10. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live and ye will and I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am God so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise 
and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, and there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breath upon thee slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Thank you for the reading of the word. <coughs> If I had to use a topic for today, the topic I would use is these bones still have life. These bones still have life. These bones, if I had to use a subtopic, then maybe we could say, I speak life unto my bones. I speak life unto my bones. You know, when, you, when the story about the, the Valley of the Dry Bones talks a lot about, you know, when the, um, the Jews were in uh, captivity and they were dispersed and they were mistreated and things of that nature. And that prophecy that comes forth is basically saying that, yeah, you're going to be able to return back to your land and that you will live again and there's going to be prosperity. But can you imagine when they're looking out and they see a valley of dry bones? Bones has been traumatized and in the elements and, and years have passed and time has brought about some changes. So a lot of times, think about how that relates to us. Can you imagine, or no, you, you can. I think most of us can imagine. We've lived life for a while and sometimes life can bring about some changes in our mental existence and our physical bodies. Um, we can start changing. You know, when you're younger, you feel like you're invincible. You can do everything. You can do 20 million things all at the same time. And then you get a little older and you get a little wiser and realize I can't, but I'm going to do the things that I want to do and I'm going to try to do it well, but I'm going to have a lot of fun too. And it, it, it just takes life and time to kind of grow up and mature and really learn from your strengths and, and um, your successes and your, your failures, if you will. Um, but life can bring about a lot of changes. And if we're not careful, by the time we get to be super seniors, we can feel like we are in that valley of dry bones. We can look back and start looking at the times that we may have failed or had some losses or some times that were hard, and we can feel like we have nothing else to give. Also, with society, sometimes we can feel, feel like we've gotten too old to contribute that it's time to move over and let other people take over. And if you're not careful, no matter what God has spoken in your life through the word or spoken to you individually, you can feel like that word doesn't apply to me. I don't have a vision for me being fruitful anymore because I still feel like I have nothing else to give. I feel like what they saw in the vision, those dry bones. I feel like I've gone through too much. I feel like I'm hurting too much. I feel my body changing. I feel my vision changing. Y'all, yeah, I, I understand. I used to think glasses were cute. Um, now I have to wear them to see y'all, or really to see this right here. I could see y'all, but I could not see this. You know what I mean? Life changes. And if you're not careful, and especially if you're not having anyone to prophesy into your life or speak into your life or if you stop speaking into your own life you do you can feel like you're giving up and you forget that God does not give up or has not given up on you because you're still here as a super senior you forget about those experiences that you've had and how now those experiences have made you rich and how you need to share them for the generations that's come behind you You've forgotten about sometimes how you needed those experiences between birth and 50, 60, 65, and so on. You needed those experiences so that, again, you can be better equipped to do the things that's needed for this world right now. So how often do you speak to yourself? How often do you remind yourself that God still has 
a plan for me in spite of the changes that I see going on in my mind or in my body? How often do you speak to yourself? I, we always talk about, um, Miss Peggy Burns, we talk about you all the time. And I would tell you, I love how you are. And so many of you I can use as examples. But I love the fact that you go more than I go. And you do it well. And I'm like, where's she going now? And she's not tired, because she's still going to be at church. She's going to the next function. She's doing the next thing. But I believe her success is that, number one, yes, she trusts God. But the other thing is, y'all, God can do everything, but he works with our will. So her mindset is, until he calls me home, I got stuff to do. So guess what happens? It's, it's a, we can't just pray and say, God going to do it. Can he? Yes. Will he work against your will? No. So what that means is that she says, I got stuff to do. Y'all catch me if you can. And because God is on her side, but she, and she has the mindset that I got stuff to do, guess what happens? Her body lines up, and it continues to be strong and to go. Her mindset says, you got this. And she's gone, and she does it, and whatever she does, she does well. She doesn't have to feel like it all the time, but she does it. I think about you just had surgery. <laughs> You know, and see, this is the thing. And let me, and I didn't ask these folks to call them out. I apologize in advance if I'm calling you out. But sometimes you have to use the people around you. Because a lot of times we talk about the folks who we can't see or folks we've heard stories about or people who are on TV. But no, y'all, we got people right here. You know, you're, you're a little bit older, just a little bit older, and just as beautiful and spry as she can be. Okay? When I, I told Pastor, I think one time when you had shared your age, I said, ain't no way on earth. Ain't no way. She gets around again, better than me, can walk faster and further than I can. I said, I got to get on the ball. Something wrong. But surgery, recuperating, on it, looking good. And even if there are some challenges, because she knows the Lord and because her mindset is, this is just, this surgery helped me to feel better and do better. I'm going to get up and keep going. Guess what she's doing? She's up and going. Okay? Again, she's not saying, oh, these dry bones have changed. I'm, I have a, a situation and I'm just going to succumb to that thing. Nah, you be honest about what's going on with you, but you trust the God who spoke about you when you were younger and when you were older, and you prophesy, meaning speak and encourage yourself. And then you allow, you act on it. That's, that's faith and works. Faith without works is dead. Well, faith is I trust the God who's taken care of me all these years. Works is I'm going to get up and go because I know God got me. But wisdom, this is the awesome thing about wisdom as we get older. Wisdom says I know how far to press myself. Because a 20-year-old pressing them in 30, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, even 40 is a little, you know, you're changing at that point for real. But let's just say 30 and below. You can push yourself a little differently. But even at 50, there are some things I'm like, girl, you need to do a little bit more than what you're doing. But common sense says, I just pulled a muscle. Um, and look, it, it's a leave in Jesus. That's what I'm, I'm depending on right now, a leave in Jesus. But seriously, common sense says when I was younger, I could push myself a different way. At 50, I got to push a little differently. That's wisdom. I still trust the Lord. I still am, you know, going to act and keep on going, but I may have to go a little differently. Why? Because age says I need to. The biggest part of um, what I was going to talk about and what the Lord gave me this morning is a lot of times we don't enjoy the fullness that God has given us. We don't enjoy the, the fullness of his power and his presence. We don't continue to serve and, and, and be as fruitful as we can because we have, we basically have told ourselves at a certain age, I don't have anything else to give. And yes, you do. Yes, you do. You're not like those dry bones. You're not, unless you choose to be. Unless you choose to be. The Lord was showing me in 1 Timothy 5, 1 through 2 and 17, in 1 Timothy 5 in general, um, that's when, I want to say, Peter wrote to Timothy. Right, Pastor? I don't remember. 
Paul, I said Paul, Lord have mercy. Paul wrote to Timothy. And basically, he's telling Timothy how to treat the different, con the different people in his congregation. And he's talking about, hey, you know, you treat the fathers, you treat the older men like fathers and the younger men like brethren and so forth. The older women like, you know, mothers and the younger women like sisters. And he talks about how you take care of the widows and things of that nature. In a nutshell, what he's basically saying is that he's, he's covering everybody that exists in that time and saying, I got a way of taking care of everybody, no matter what your age is, no matter what your situation is. The super seniors are included in that. That means that he's already made provision through the church and otherwise of taking care of his people. When he talks about even in Psalm 92 and 14, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Again, we don't stop producing because we get older. We just do it differently. That's it. Um, again, y'all, we need your stories. We need your wisdom. And we don't need the, the fabricated stories. We need the real stories. Now, you know, sometimes a lot of seniors will talk about, I've been saved all my life, and I didn't go to them clubs, and I didn't do this and that, and I didn't do this. And I'm like, hold up. I know your story. You know, I, I, I know some stuff. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Because, see, we need to hear that stuff because we're living that now. So for the mothers who are looking at girls coming in and having babies and they're young and they don't know what to do with them, they need to hear from those mamas who also had those experiences who could say, girl, times are different, but let me tell you how rough it was back then and how we need a community to make it happen. Let me tell you what you need to do now and help those young ladies because they, they, they need that help. It's no shame in the game, but see, you're bringing wisdom and experience. You can't argue with wisdom and experience. You can't tell your stories because they make sense. They're valuable. No shame. No shame. When people are talking about build entrepreneurship and, and trying to build businesses and doing great things, guess what? Most of our people had to do it because they couldn't go and work for certain agencies or certain companies. So we had to be a people who could create something from nothing. Tell our younger people about that. And guess what? You'll be surprised at what they already know. So validate them by listening and learning from them, but share your stories because your expertise, your stories matter. And they need to hear from the good and the bad. But the biggest thing I come to encourage you and to tell you about is what the Lord put on my heart and that there is still work to do and you still have fruit that you're bearing or you can bear. Why? Because you ain't, you still here. And while we are still here, there's work to do. The beautiful thing about getting older, y'all, is you can choose how you want to do things. You can do it differently and you can definitely do it better. Why? Because you have wisdom and experience on your side. You know, as a therapist, one thing I love is I've, you know, okay, so I'm, I'm smart, I can pick up things, that's wonderful. Book knowledge is great. But the thing that has made me a better therapist over time is life and living in experiences. Now, I understand that everybody's experiences is not mine, so I don't try to push my stuff on them. But there is something about having lived through a situation that makes you a little more connected to it. And so what I found out is, and, and I'll never forget this, I remember getting older. Um, well, first of all, when I was a young therapist, I was a big sister. And then I'll never forget what somebody said, oh, Miss T, you're so much like a mom or a sweet auntie. I said, oh, Lord, the change has occurred. You know, I'm no longer the big sister. I'm the mom and the auntie. I'm like, okay, Lord, I can't deal with this here. But it's here. It's been here for a while. And I'm like, I'll own it. I'll own it. Um, but I remember talking to a young lady. And I was sharing something. And whenever you're sharing an experience, you know, self disclosure you got to be a little careful about what you're sharing, how you're sharing. It needs to be appropriate. And considering what she was dealing with, I was doing what, I was sharing what was appropriate for the time, so I thought. And then I'm thinking, she's not getting it, something's not hitting. She understands it, but I'm not, co not connecting with her. And I said, well, let me just share something with you, if you will. And I began to share how I understood, on some level, what she was going through, because I had the experience. And I let her know, girl, I don't share this often, but I just need to let you understand 
yada, 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 and we talked, and she said, Miss T, you wait to the end of the session to tell me this. She said, you should have led with this. And that opened up everything else. I think we went a whole nother hour, and it was so needed. And she said to me, she said, Miss T, you still young. Tell me, you still young, girl, but you know, you got a little age. She said, you about my mama's age? She said, and that's a blessing. She said, because if I had to talk to somebody my age who clearly didn't get it, she said, we might go through some, the same thing, but I don't want to hear from someone who's going through it now. I want to know what does it look like when you come through? She said, in other words, I'm grateful for your book knowledge, but it's your life. It's your life lesson that I needed. She said, so when you tell me it's going to be all right, I know it is because I'm looking at you and it's all right. She said, and when you tell me what stages I might go through, she said, yeah, I'm already through some. And your book knowledge didn't tell you that. She said, because I've been reading about it too. And they didn't list that in any of the stuff I pulled up. She said, you can tell me because you went through it. I said, girl, you're right. They need to put that in the book. She said, they ain't going to put that in there, Ms. T. I said, nah, but now you understand. I say that to say our life experiences make us rich. And so as you get older, you embrace it because every day that we are here is because God decided to breathe life into our bodies. He protected us. He kept, kept us. He continues to keep us, and he restores us daily. And whenever getting older starts to catch up with us, first of all, let me just say something. Do not accept the fact that getting older means that we're getting worse, that we have to get sick, we have to get, you know, all the negative stuff. There are some natural things that are going to come with getting older. That's true, and that's fine. But not the worst of the worst, y'all. That's, nah. Let me tell you something. One thing about Ezekiel 37, when he talks about the valley of the dry bones, the bones were, were really dry and, and just, you know, everything was peeled away because they had been in the elements. They weren't cared for. So on this journey of living longer, Let's continue to praise God, but take care of these vessels that he gave us. Quality of life, yes, we can pray and ask God to heal us, and you know his word says he will. But we need to get enough sleep. We need to eat right. We need to stay hydrated. And guess what? Go to the doctor. Always call on Dr. Jesus, but still, go to the, the doctors that he gave um, insight to and he got he gave them training to do what they do go to them still consult with the lord but take your medicine go to your appointments do what you're supposed to do and still pray and trust god you have to take care of it y'all we are body we are spirit we are soul we got to take care of all of it that soulish emotional part of us matters too that's the part of us that basically sometimes conflicts with the Holy Spirit because the soul says, I want what I want, when I want it, how I want it, and how often. Uh -huh. And it doesn't always coincide with the Word of God. Yeah. And so it takes that spirit man to say, all right, now, I created you, I know, but pull, pull, that, pull, that, pull that back in. But feed the soul by reading the Word of God, being positive, focusing on things that bring you life, making decisions that are healthy for you and don't continue to pull and take from you. That's the blessing of being older. You know you can say no. You can even say, yeah, I just don't feel like that today. Doesn't mean you're sick, it just means you don't feel like it today. You can say no and get away with it. You can tell people what you're not gonna do and get away with it. That's a blessing. Seriously, you can use your time for you if you allow yourself to and you don't owe anybody an explanation. You don't have to. Y'all better use the privileges you have. You can get on the road and go and have fun and just take longer because you ain't got to rush. I love hanging out with my senior citizens, with, with the, I call them super seniors, because y'all can hang out and y'all enjoy the art of hanging out. I'm down for a good hangout. Y'all know some just Peggy, we'll roll. So you know I mean? It's just take advantage of the season of life that you're in Speak to yourself, be healthy and whole, stay around people who are enjoying life too. Not people who are always hurting and down and out and got something to complain about. If they're in that position, pray for them, encourage them, go to the doctor, check on them, but keep yourself around people who are gonna speak life and who wanna still live. 
That's what the word of God is speaking life to these bones of ours. Why? Because they ache at every age, especially 40 and above. Lord, and at 50, stuff hurt that I forgot I had. I'm like, what is this? Why am I hurting? You know why? But you all are blessed. You have something to give. And y'all, we need it from you. We need it. And let me tell you, if you're around people who can't, uh, you know, take what you have to give or don't appreciate it, then you're talking to the wrong people anyway. It's not because something's wrong with you or you don't have anything to give. It's just because those people are not mature enough or willing to receive from you. So don't cast your pearls before swine. Let God go ahead and deal with them and get them ready to hear your wisdom. And the other beautiful thing is, again, remember, at all ages, we can still learn. So there is a lot that even a younger generation gives to us. They do. A lot of times, they'll push us to do things that we've gotten comfortable with. They'll push us out of our comfort zone. When I pulled my back a few days ago, it was so crazy. Um, I was seeing students and the little student said, um, oh, Miss T, you got up kind of weird. She said, you're clutching your fist. What in the world? And I said, girl, I'm getting older. She said, mm -mm, don't you dare. She said, you, can't, you get me on everything I say negative. She said, so reframe that. I said, no, you're not using my stuff against me. And I said, okay, I pulled a muscle and I hurt. And then I, I started to say something. She said, mm -mm. She said, it's going to be a longer session. I said, no, you got to get to class. And she said, well, I'm an athlete and tell me where it hurts. And something she was telling me to do to stretch. I said, girl, I'm not gonna do that because it hurts. And she said, every time I meet with you, you're encouraging me to stretch, to stretch beyond what I think and what I feel so I can be better in the classroom and on the field. Don't you dare tell me what you can't do. She said, isn't that how you buck up on me? I said, yeah, but you can't do that on me because I'm older. She said, if you're gonna teach it and preach it, you better live it. And she said, come over here, Miss T. And when I tell you that girl had me stretch and I felt better for a little while, but again, that may seem like a simple thing, but she pulled me out of my comfort zone because of a pain and because I thought I knew better. I don't need to stretch. That's stupid. I'm going to hurt something. But here's a girl, a young lady who's an athlete, who is also being trained as a trainer, who's like, you told me what you did. I know what muscle. I felt it. I feel the knot. I know what to do with that. So I'm helping in her in one way. She's helping me another. Y'all, we can learn from each other. But for my super seniors, trust the God who has carried you all these years. Trust the God who has healed you before. Trust the God who has restored you when you needed restoration before. Trust the God who has taken care of your family when you needed extra help and he was all you had. He's that same God now at this age. Trust the God that when the doctors say, I've done all I can do, to say, okay, well, go get that second opinion and trust the God who's created a body and healed it again before. God is that same God now than he was when you were younger. And he's a God who meets us where we are. And every day you speak to yourself and you thank God for another day's journey. You thank God for, as people say, another day around the sun. And for any little ache, laugh at yourself and say, you know what, I've earned this little ache. I've earned it. I've been here for a while, but I'm not going to let you stop me. But you move slower, that's fine. Move slower, but still get to where you have to go. And understand that God still has something for you to do. You still have fruit to bear. There, is, there are still people who need you, and there are people who you may be able to reach that we never could. So there's still work for y'all to do. And the beautiful thing is you do it on your own terms, in your own time. And it's just as wonderful. Why? Because God ordained you to still be here and be fruitful. Amen. So on that note, I love you. I thank God for you all. And I consider it a blessing to even be in your presence. Um, and um, I just thank God for y'all. And at the end, we're going to have a little blessing for you at the little end. We, you know, you know we got to send you home with something. But continue to speak to yourself and speak life, speak health, speak strength, speak clarity of mind. And remember, when everything's changed a little bit, it's okay if there are changes. Roll with those changes. You can still be just as effective. Just got to tweak some things. The key to living and being successful, y'all, and living a long time and being healthy is being able to adjust to whatever comes. 
And God is a God who can preserve us and help us to adjust and still never miss a beat. So on that note, I love you. I thank God for the time with you. And I look forward to continuing to hang out with y'all. Thank God for y'all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank Sister Tanya for allowing God to use her this morning. And she tells us that these bones still have life. And she says, I speak life unto my bones. So whatever you've been saying to yourself, if it's not been life-giving, if it's not been speaking strength into your life, change your language and speak different to yourself. Amen. It's easy to get down, right? But it's even easier to stand in front of that mirror and look at that person who you've seen change over the years. You know about them better than anybody else on this earth. Speak life to that person. Encourage that person. You're not getting older. You're getting better. Amen. Amen. There might be one who doesn't know Christ as Savior. Would you open your heart today? Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. If you don't know Christ this morning, pray this prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. And I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. You said that prayer, you saved. And I encourage you to find yourself a church home that will cover you and encourage you and help you along the way. There might be ones that, Pastor, I want to be baptized. Would you come? Might be one looking for a church home. You can come by on your own Christian experience. You can come by letter. You can come under watch care. Mount Zion Baptist Church would love to be your church family, and I'd love to be your pastor. Would you come? I'd like us to pray for our seniors today. I'd like us to pray for our seniors. And I'm going to ask our seniors to come. Those who can come, if you'd come first. And those of us who can come after them, would you come? Those who are able and would like to come to the altar, if you come now, I want to pray for our seniors. Then I'd ask all the others of you would come. And just to follow up that beautiful word of encouragement from Sister Tanya, when you get to be a super senior, God has you right where he wants you. Amen. Hope you're ready because he's ready for you. If there are names you'd like to lift up, Seeing you or not, or concerns, you can lift those up at this time. Amen. 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 Nancy Clark. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, God. We magnify you. We lift your name on high and give you great glory. You're such an awesome God. You're the ancient of days. There's nothing that you've never seen. Nothing that's gotten past you, God. Nothing surprises you. Nothing can sneak around you. You are the God of all and of all time. Thank you for being our God, the God who blesses us. And Lord, we come today giving you great glory, magnifying you, worshiping your holy and your righteous name. We present, Lord, our super seniors to you. You've known them from the foundation of the world. You put purpose and promise into their lives, Lord God. You've walked with them day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. And Lord, you've brought them to this Sunday on purpose. They didn't just happen to make it to the day, but you've kept them. And we thank you for undergirding them with your truth and your power. Let them realize, Lord God, what it is you have in store for them. And that you are not through with them yet. That you are still pointing into their lives. You are still their strength. You are still their help. You are still their keeper. You are still their way maker. You still have plans for them, Lord. Father, you've grown them and prepared them for such a time as this. Breathe on them, God. Renew their spirit. Restore that joy of the Lord. Father, give them, Lord, a, a firm hold on their purpose. That they'll rise each morning, Lord, with expectation. Not wondering, Lord, why you didn't take them, but wondering where you're going to take them. Thank you, Lord, for using them, Lord, in a great and a mighty way. Pour out your spirit on them, God. And, Lord, we just thank you for every name that was lifted up, every situation that's been presented today, that you are willing to take those challenges on, Lord. Father, we can't do it. So we come to you asking you to heal, asking you to lift up off the sick bed, asking you to be their strength, Lord, asking you to save, asking you to provide, asking you to deliver. For, Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. You told us to cast our cares upon you, God, for you care for us. You can have them. Now you do that thing that you do, God. Bring it to pass. We trust you, God. And Father, we give you great glory today. And Lord, forgive us for our sins, for things we've said or done or thought. Forgive us when we didn't trust like we should have. Forgive us when we didn't walk in faith. Forgive us, God, when we refuse to do what you call us to do. Forgive us in our unbelief, God. Wash us now. Fill us afresh with your spirit. And Lord, from this day forth, Lord God, we rise every morning in victory. We rise in the morning receiving your great new mercy. We rise with a different perspective. We rise knowing that there's a day that we can get something positive done. We rise, Lord God, knowing that you're going to do something in our lives Bring somebody we can, we can uh, 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 evangelize to. Bring someone in our path we can encourage. Somebody's going to encourage us. Every day, Lord, we're going to see it as a blessed and beautiful day. Because it's a day that you have made. And every day you made, we want to rejoice and be glad in it. So we come rejoicing. We come giving you praise. We come glorifying your name. We come lifting you up. We come in thanksgiving. We bless you, Lord God. We adore you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let's give God a hand clap for free. Amen. As you leave today, if you would come this way and walk by the kitchen, um, Sister Tiny says he has something for each of you all, so make sure you go by and get it. Did y'all enjoy that word today? Yeah. Thank you, Sister Tanya, for letting God pour into you and then you pouring out to us. What a benediction. You have a final word? Amen. I don't think I have any announcement. Am I missing something, anybody? Yes, Sean, again, thank you. Now, if you didn't hear exactly everything that Brother Norwood said, in short, he said, you got to sing that song again. That's not, that's not what he said, but that's what he said. Okay. Amen. So we look forward to that again. And if you happen to change up to another one, we'll receive that too. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Lord God, we thank you for the purpose of aging. Thank you for these super seniors, for having walked them up until this very time, and for having a plan, Lord God, for them going forward. Bless them in their going out, in their coming in. Watch over us all, God, as we travel these roads. Deliver us safely to our next destiny, destination, God. And when we make it home, ultimately, God, bless us to find our homes better off, much, much better off than when we left it. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest through and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Amen.